mitral valve regurgitation and insufficiency. Definition. Mitral valve regurgitation refers to incompetence of the mitral valve causing backward ejection of flow into the left atrium during a ventricular systole. It is the most common valvular defect in acute rheumatic heart disease. The mitral apparatus. The mitral valve is made up of an annulus or a ring to which an anterior and a posterior leaflet are attached. These are connected by tendinous cords called the cardiac tendinae to papillary muscles that arise from the ventricular wall. The posterior walls of the left atrium and left ventricle are functionally part of this mitral apparatus. Causes Mitral valve prolapse or Barlow syndrome or myxomatous degeneration is the most common cause of mitral regurgitation. The cordae are too long and the leaflets thus bulge like a parachute into the left atrium where they open. Coronary heart disease or posterior acute myocardial infarction is the second most common cause of mitral regurgitation. Ischemic changes in the left ventricle causes rupture of the posterior medial papillary muscle which results in poor contraction. Acute rheumatic fever, endocarditis, which includes infective endocarditis, Lipman Sachs endocarditis, as in systemic lupus erythematosus, and non-bacterial thrombotic endocarditis can all cause the leaflets and the cordae to shrink and become more rigid, thus impairing the valve closure. Left heart failure, dilated cardiomyopathy, myocarditis results in the annulus becoming dilated and the left ventricle is enlarged. Marfan syndrome results in lengthened and even ruptured cordae and a dilated annulus resulting in mitral valve regurgitation. Note that the intermittent mitral regurgitation occurs due to ischemia involving a papillary muscle or adjacent myocardium. Pathophysiology. The regurgitant volume per unit time is dependent on the mitral valve opening area during systole, the pressure gradient from the left ventricle to left atrium during the ventricular systole, and the duration of systole. Mitral valve prolapse, endocarditis, coronary heart disease, and Marfan syndrome can all lead towards shrunken, thickened, stiffened, prolapsing leaflets, which results in distended left atrium, deforming and stiffening the valve ring, and making the cordate too long or too short and resulting in its rupture, also adding insult to the papillary muscle by causing fibrosis or its rupture, which can result from left ventricular ischemia, fibrosis, or eventually aneurysm. All of these factors contribute towards mitral valve losing its function as a functional valve. This results in part of the stroke volume being pumped back into the left atrium. This is regurgitant volume, which contributes to about 80% of the stroke volume. As a result, there is a holosystolic murmur of mitral regurgitation. Mitral regurgitation can be acute or it could be chronic. In acute mitral regurgitation, the atrial compliance is very low. As a result, the atrium cannot be stretched much. This results in an increased left atrial pressure, which is caught on the JVP curve as a high V wave resulting in pulmonary edema, dyspnea, hemoptysis, and pulmonary hypertension, which eventually causes right heart failure. It also results in a decreased forward cardiac output, resulting in decreased systolic pressure, tachycardia, increase in regurgitant volume, and thereby contributing towards increase in the mitral regurgitant murmur and this results in a vicious cycle. In patients with chronic mitral regurgitation, the atrial compliance is quite high. The left atrium has gotten used to being distended 
and the volume overload from the mitral regurgitant flow results in atrial dilation, atrial damage, causing tachyarrhythmias, along with posterior leaflet of the mitral valve getting displaced. All of these contribute towards a regurgitant volume increase and thereby adds insult towards increase in the mitral regurgitant flow. The volume overload also causes an increased diastolic filling time to increase the stroke volume and also causes an increased preload. Hence, the end diastolic volume increases. This causes the ventricular wall to dilate, resulting in eccentric left ventricular hypertrophy, causing left heart failure. The ventricular dilation further contributes towards increase in mitral regurgitation murmur. The increased regurgitant volume due to left atrial dilation further increases the atrial dilation, thereby predisposing to tachyarrhythmias like atrial flutter or atrial fibrillation. In acute mitral regurgitation, flash pulmonary edema and decreased cardiac output can cause cardiogenic shock. Clinical findings. Patients with mitral regurgitation can present with dyspnea, inspiratory crackles due to pulmonary edema, and cough from left heart failure. The cough is usually due to irritation of the bronchial mucosa due to fluid overload from the left heart failure. There is also a holosystolic or pansystolic murmur with added heart sounds like the S3 and S4. Deep held inspiration for 3 to 5 seconds does not alter the intensity of the murmur or the abnormal heart sounds. Diagnosis Mitral regurgitation can be exclusively diagnosed with the help of echocardiography. The presence and severity of mitral regurgitation are readily assessed by transthoracic Doppler echocardiography, and the mechanism of regurgitation is often apparent on two-dimensional imaging. Mitral regurgitation could be from dilated cardiomyopathy, leaflet prolapse, or ruptured papillary muscle. Electrocardiography. To evaluate for evidence of ischemia as a contributing cause, left ventricular hypertrophy, left atrial enlargement, and atrial fibrillation may also be present. Differential diagnosis. The differentials include aortic stenosis, ventricular septal defect, tricuspid regurgitation, aortic regurgitation, myocardial infarction, mitral valve prolapse, mitral valve stenosis, acute bacterial endocarditis, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Treatment can be medical or surgical intervention. Medical therapy includes the use of diuretics to treat the heart failure, anticoagulants to prevent thromboembolism, and vasodilators to increase the forward flow. Specific treatment is surgical which includes mitral valve repair or replacement.